Hello, my name is Jason Murray. I'm an architecture consulting engineer with Cisco Systems. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the upgrade of a unified computing system, UCS, from version 1.3 to 1.4. Here's an overview of what I'll be covering in this video. First, I'll go over running and all configuration backup, then walk through the checking of the status of the endpoints to make sure we don't run into any issues during the upgrade. Next, I will FTP the software to the flash of the UCS. Then I'll upgrade the firmware on the interface cards, the CIMCs, and the I.O. modules to get them ready to activate. Next, I'll go through the process of actually activating the 1.4 software on the, each of the endpoints. And lastly, I'll create a host firmware package and apply it to the service profile to upgrade a BIOS on my servers. So to start the backup, you'll need to go to the admin tab and make sure the all node is selected at the top. Now on the work pane on the general tab, choose backup. On this window, choose create backup operation. On the next window for admin state, choose enabled and type make sure all configuration is selected. I'm going to check the preserve identities box to keep the identities I've created. I'll keep FTP selected since that's the server type I have, the IP address of my server, the remote file name I want to give it, and my username and password. And I'll click OK. And this tells me that I successfully created a backup. So I'll click on OK on this. So the backup is started. And if I go over here and highlight the backup operation, I can check on the status. And it's already completed successfully. Uh, the time depends on how much configuration you actually have on the system. Since this is a rather clean system, it ran pretty quickly. I'll just close this out by clicking OK. And now the system has been backed up. Next thing that needs to be done is the status check to make sure the system is ready for an upgrade so we don't run into any failures. The first thing I'm going to check is the status of the fabric interconnects. So for that, I'll go to the equipment tab. Then I'll come down to the fabric interconnect section and expand that. As you can see, I only have one fabric interconnect on this system. So to check the status, I'll highlight this fabric interconnect and select the general tab. You want to make sure that the overall status states that it's operable. If it's in any other state, stop and fix the problem before moving on with the upgrade. Now if you did have two fabric interconnects, the next thing that you'd want to be checked is the high availability status. To do that, you just scroll down this page and look at the high availability details section. The ready field needs to be yes, and the state needs to be up to continue on. The next item to be checked is the I.O. modules. For that, I'll highlight the chassis that they're located in and choose the I.O. modules tab. On this tab, you want to make sure that each I.O. module has an overall status of operable. The next item that needs to be checked is the servers. For that, I'll highlight servers in the navigation pane. In the work pane, expand the operability column and make sure all the servers are operable. If any server has an issue, make sure to correct the problem before proceeding. The last item that needs to be checked is the adapters in the servers. To do that, expand servers and then highlight each individual server. Go to the inventory tab and click on the interface cards tab. For each adapter, check the overall status and operability columns and make sure each status says operable. And that's all the checks that need to be done. If any of your endpoints are in a faulty condition, make sure you correct the issue before proceeding with the upgrade. In the next section, I'll go through getting the upgrade image onto the UCS system. To download the firmware image onto the UCS, You'll need to be on the Equipment tab with the Equipment node highlighted. On the Work pane, you'll need to be on the Firmware Management tab and then Install Firmware sub-tab. From there, click on the Download Firmware button. On the pop-up window, I'm going to choose FTP as my protocol. I'm going to put the IP address of my FTP server. 
and file name. I'm going to paste that in. Make sure I add the VIN extension. Remote path is going to be a root. And then I'll put the username and password of the FTP server. And then click OK. Now it tells me that my download task has been successfully created. I'll click OK to acknowledge. I can check the status of the download by going to the Download Task tab. And when I highlight the task I just created, I can see that it's currently downloading. Now this is a rather large file, so what I'll do is I'll forward the video up to when it's completed. Okay, the download is completed, and now I can go to the Packages tab to see the new file listed. Now we're ready to start updating our endpoint firmware. All right. Since we've completed a backup, all system checks are good to go, and we have our software in our system, we are ready to start updating our firmware. Now this part does not actually upgrade these endpoints, but it puts the software in place so in a little bit you can activate it. So to update the firmware, go up and click the Update Firmware button. On this window, we can see that we can update the firmware on three endpoints, the interface card, the CIMCs, and the I.O. modules. When you're just updating the firmware and not activating it, you can update these three endpoints all at the same time. This time, however, I'm going to update the firmware on each endpoint individually, starting with the interface cards. Now that I have the interface card selected, I can use the drop-down and set the version to 1.4. Now you can see that version 1.4 is listed in the backup version column on each card. I'll go ahead and click OK to accept the changes. The interface cards are now updating the firmware. You can check the status of the cards by expanding this tree. As you can see, the status shows it's updating. This will take some time, so I'll forward up to when they have been completed. All right, the interface cards have been finished updating, and now they are in a ready state. The next endpoint I'll update are the CIMCs. So I'll go back up to Update Firmware and choose CIMC Controller and set the version to 1.4 and then I'll click OK. Again, you can check the status by expanding this tree here and now you can see that it, the CIMCs are updating. I'll go ahead and forward it up to when it's completed. Alright, the CIMCs have been updated. Now lastly, I'll go update the I.O. modules. So I'll choose I.O. module and set the version to 1.4 and then I'll click OK. So the I.O. module is now updating and again I'll forward up the video to when it's done. OK, so the I.O. module has completed updating and is now ready for activation. Since that is the last endpoint we'll update, we'll move on to activating the firmware. All right, the system is now ready for firmware activation. This is the order in which you need to follow for a successful upgrade. Since I'm going to be doing a direct upgrade to the interface cards, those are going to be completed first. You do have the option of upgrading the interface cards using a host firmware package, just like the BIOS will be upgraded. If you choose to go that route, then you'll update the interface cards last along with the BIOS. In that case, the CMCs would be activated first. Keep in mind that you should activate each endpoint individually in this listed order. Do not choose all and update them all at once. Also, at certain points during the upgrade, the endpoints will need to be rebooted, so these upgrades should be done during the outage window. The first endpoint I'm going to update is the interface cards. To do that, I'll click on Activate Firmware. On this window, choose Interface Cards and set the version to 1.4 and check the box next to Ignore Compatibility Check because this firmware is not compatible with any previous releases and this will ensure activation succeeds. Then click on Apply then OK to acknowledge the pop-up. As you can see the status is pending next boot so the firmware will be activated the next time the servers are rebooted. 
Next, I'll do the same thing for the CIMC controllers. So choose CIMC controller. Then I'll set the version to 1.4. And then I'll click ignore compatibility check and then apply. Keep in mind, as soon as you click apply, it'll reboot the servers. So if you don't want to reboot them all at once, you can activate one server CIMC at a time. Also, because the servers are rebooting, this will update the interface cards as well. I'll click OK to acknowledge. And now you can see as a status, they're all rebooting. So now I'll forward the video up to when the servers are back up. All the servers are now back from reboot and their status shows ready. Now you can see and the running version of each CIMC is at version 1.4. So I'll go ahead and click OK and go and activate the I.O. module firmware. We'll go back to activate firmware, then choose I.O. modules from the drop down list. Then we'll set the version to 1.4. Check the box next to ignore compatibility check. And then we'll click apply. And acknowledge the pop up. The status is now changed to pending next boot. So now I'll click OK. The next item on the list to activate is the UCS manager. And just like the others, you're going to go to activate firmware. Then you're going to choose UCS manager from the drop down. And you're going to set the version to 1.4. And you're going to check the box next to compatibility check and then click OK. Once you click OK, you're going to lose your connection to the manager because the manager is restarting. So what I'll do now is I'll move up the video again to when it's finished restarting. OK, the manager is back up and now you can see at the login window that it says it's at 1.4. So we'll go ahead and log into it. And we're back in. You'll notice right away you can already see something different. There's now another section in the navigation pane for rack mount devices. This is new with 1.4 so you can add C-series servers as well. Next, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the fabric interconnects. So we'll go back to the firmware management tab. Then we'll click on activate firmware and choose fabric interconnects from the drop down. On the kernel and the system, we're going to set the startup version to 4.2. I'm going to check the box for ignore compatibility check and click OK. And this gives a warning that says the fabric interconnects will reboot. And we know that, so we're going to click yes. As the fabric interconnects reboot, they will also reboot the I.O. modules. So those will get upgraded at this point. If you had a cluster and wanted to minimize downtime, then you would upgrade the secondary first and then the primary. Since I have one fabric interconnect, I'm going to lose my connection on the reboot. So when it comes back up, I'll create my host firmware package and update the server BIOS.